Okay, so we are still looking at differential equations, and in particular we're still looking at linear independence and the Ronskin. Okay, so last time we saw this Ronskin test, okay, for linear independence of a set of functions, and now we see that it, they say that it can be shown that if the set F is a set of solutions to a linear homogeneous differential equation, then the implication for the Ronskin test runs in both directions. Okay. Oops. So in the case, in this case, if set, uh, set F is a set of solutions to a linear homogeneous differential equation, okay, then which, of course, then the Ronskian, then if there exists an x naught such that the Ronskian is not zero, then f is linearly independent, right? But also vice versa. Now, this is only true if this Ronskian is the set f is solutions to solutions to linear linear homogeneous differential equation okay linear homogeneous differential equation linear homogeneous differential equation remember it's uh, so it's homogeneous so that means the right hand side is zero it's some stuff equals zero and it's linear which means that it can be written in the form of like t of y equals zero So it's like t of y equals zero, where t is the linear, uh, linear transformation of functions, linear operator, but in particular, it's the linear operator. It's the linear operator which goes, um, which takes y and gives you some function alpha n, hmm, some function alpha n of x times by, ah, in fact, it'd be rather right like this. It's a sum of things, and you have each 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 uh, term in the sum is alpha i function of alpha function of x, and then an i derivative of y. And then you sum these together from zero to n. The zero has a zero derivative, which is just the function itself, and so that equals zero. That's what linear homogeneous differential equation is. So if f is a set of solutions to that, then you can tell if it's linear independent perfectly with the Ronskin test. Then the implication, oops, then the implication thing run, runs in both directions, unlike if a set of solutions, even, unlike if that f is just a random set of functions. Okay. Any other, uh, an, an, any other set of functions. Okay, and this is going to be important because this, so this is what we're going to use the Ronskin for, for checking to see whether we have a complete linearly independent set of solutions to linear homogeneous differential equations that we're trying to solve. Okay, then you can use that, this result, to show let t of y equals zero be a linear homogeneous differential equation of order n. Okay, so order n, like this one here, is order n, the highest derivative is n. Then the dimension of the solution space is n. Okay, and any linearly independent, so dimension of the, dimension of the solution space is n, any linearly in independent set f of n solutions to t of y, one, any set independent set f of solution of n solutions to the equation. So they, these all these y i's are solutions. So they all go into t y i equals zero. That's what it means to be a solution to this equation. Is a basis, and any solution can be rewritten as linear combination of those. Okay. So now this two follows directly from this, right? If we're saying that the dimension of the solution space is n, okay. We're saying, what does it dimension mean? Dimension means the size of a basis. Okay, so we're saying that a, a basis for the that for this for this um, for the solution space, which just has to have n elements. So, if you had any, we know from general theory about vector spaces that any set then of n linearly independent vectors in this solution space will be a basis for that solution space. Right, that's what we have here. So, any linearly independent set f of n solutions. It will automatically be a basis, and since it's a basis, 
that means there, there's a way of writing any solution as a linear combination. In fact, it's a unique linear combination of those solutions, right? This, this, this whole two just follows from saying the dimension of the solution space S is, the dimension of the solution space is N, where you remember that dimension means that this, actually, this one actually says the size of a basis for the solution space is N. Okay, but this, this one, the fact proving that the size of a basis is N, uh, that is not going to be explained here. Uh, presumably it's complicated proof. You can look it up on Wikipedia or somewhere else. Okay, or you can ask me about it and we'll look it up together. Okay, I'll look it up for you and help figure it out. Okay, so we have an example now. Show that this set one and the e to the x squared over two is a basis for the solution space of this differential equation. X y dash dash minus x squared plus one y dash equals zero. Okay. Now this this is definitely a linear homogeneous differential equation. Okay. It's homogeneous because on the right we just have a zero. Okay. We have terms we have terms with y's and y dashes and then just a zero. Okay. There's no constant there. It's definitely a differential equation. It's just got, it's got derivatives in it, it's just things like y and derivatives of y. It's linear because in front of each y or derivative of y, we just have functions of x, okay? Not functions of y, just functions of x. Not functions of y, not derivatives of y, just functions of x. And then those things, each term then is just added together. You have x, this ter first term added to this second term, okay? So it's a linear homogeneous differential equation. So that means we can apply this Ronskin test to it. We know that the Ronskin test will tell us without doubt whether or not this set is linear independent. And thus, since this has got two things in it, and this is a second order differential equation, a second order linear homogeneous differential equation, we know that the, the, the dimension of this, by this theorem, we know that the dimension of this is two. So if this is linear independent, then we'll know it's a basis. Okay. So, well, if, it's, if this thing really is a set of solutions, to this. So first of all, we check that those two functions are both solutions to the differential equation. Of course, that's easy. You just sub them in, right? You don't have to do any solving, you just sub in. Hold on, I've got to stop my cat from eating. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so the first function, y equals 1, y1 one equals 1, is clearly a solution since its first and second derivatives are 0. Okay, so you just get 0 minus 0 equals 0. The second function, we need to calculate the first and second derivatives of y of y2. So I don't know why they dropped the, dropped the subscript, but this is, you know, derivative of y2, and this is the second derivative of y2. So the first derivative of this, how do you do it? You chain rule, right? So you've got to bring down... Yeah, you leave that e to the thing and you bring down the derivative of that thing, which is 2x squared over 2, which is, no, which is 2x over 2, which is just x, so you get this. Now you've got to apply the product rule, get the second derivative, so you get just derivative of x is 1, so you just get that term, and then you get, leave the x and then bring down the x again, you take the derivative of that, you get that. Okay, cool. So those are the derivatives. Now you sub those into the differential equation, into this differential equation, so you now have x times that second derivative minus x squared plus 1 times that first derivative. And what you get? You get, here we have x times x times the exponential, and here we have minus x times exponential, so those cancel. Then here we have x cubed times exponential, and we have minus x cubed times exponential, those cancel as well. Okay. So this is a solution. So that means that this set is a, is a set of two solutions, and so if they're linearly independent, then, good. Uh, now, of course, it's actually trivial to see that these are linearly independent because these, they, this is not, these functions are not scalar multiples, multiples of each other. So you don't actually need to use the wrong scale. You don't actually need to use the wrong scale in this case. It's clear that they are not scalar multiples of each other. But let's just do it just for, just to, just to practice using the wrong scale. Okay, so we first row, we put in the two functions, one and e to the x squared over two. Second row is the der derivatives of those, which is one derivative of one is of course zero. And we already worked out the derivative of, of the y2, of its x e to the x squared over two. Okay, so now you calculate the determinant. So you're gonna get x e to the x squared over two. Okay, of course. Okay, so remember when we're doing this thing, 
we just need to find one value which makes this non-zero, because then we know we can invert this matrix that this is the determinant of, and thus show that the only coefficients that work at that value of x are the zeros, so therefore the only coefficients that work everywhere are zeros. Okay. Well, there are many values of x that make the Ronsky non-zero, for example, 1. Yeah, so it's easy to see that this many values that make that non-zero. In fact, any value other than x equals 0 makes that non-zero. Okay. So this is an independent set. Uh, in fact, you know, really we should have talked about the, what interval we're talking about here. But in this case, you know, never mind. Let's say we were talking the interval of these functions are defined on what's the real numbers. Okay. So this is an independent set, and thus the general solution can be written as Okay, because you have, now we have a basis, it's a linear independent set, so we know this is a basis, okay? Because it's two, 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 linear independent, two linearly independent solutions to a second order linear homogeneous differential equation, so it's a basis. And so the general solution is a linear combination of those, of the basis vectors. Okay, of course, there are other possible basis vectors, right? Just because you found one basis doesn't mean there isn't another basis. It, you know it'll always have two vectors in it. But there could be other bases, it could, you know, there's there other possibilities. But this one is one of the possibilities. Um, oh, to make up a trivial example, you know, you can see, right, that you could, you, another possibility would be one of the solutions could be, you could make one of the solutions 1 plus e to the x squared over 2, right? And the other one could be three, for example. That's also, a, that's also a basis for the solution space. And so the solutions can also be written as linear combination of those two functions or vectors, okay, like that. Either one of these is the general solution. Okay, and leave it there.